Good day. I wrap scene with your metal market wrap up, and this is for Thursday, the 27th of February, 2020, and we're getting on to 5:30. What a day! The biggest break day in the Dow, and I think the S&P that I think ever. <laughs> I want you to go check it. I know in the Dow it was, but a few others it was. And I think we're going to find that in terms of a 10% correction where the stock indices go from literally February 19th and many indices, not every one, but I think three of the four big ones, they were at new highs and they've corrected in over 10%. Wow. So what has the gold market done? Well, it's up, but it's not running. It's digesting. How's that for a good word? I wrote that in my news report this morning. I said, you've got divergence in this market. It needs to consolidate these gains. Why? I'm going to show you in a moment here. But as you can see tonight, you're still getting more of a break. You're getting a little bounce off the lows. The market's in a panic mode. So if you're trying to find reasons why things are happening, forget it. It's COVID-19. The Fed can't get you out of this. It's mother nature, science. That's going to get us out out of this situation. The plague ended, polio got conquered, measles, chicken pox, COVID-19 will. Do not panic. That simple. All right, in the gold for the week, we're up nicely, but you know, $3. It's not a runaway. You would think gold would be up more with the stock market breaking so dramatic this week, but it's not. You can see the consolidation that is going on in the marketplace now. The trend is up. You still have higher lows and higher highs. The number I really don't want to see taken out to keep that pattern is 1626.60. Where's the 18-day average of closes? It's catching up to price, but it's not there yet. If the market were to get under this 1626.60, I would be very unsurprised, in other words, no surprise at all, if this turned out to be that wherever that comes in, the next support zone. Right now, I wanted to wait to get things open uh, into the Friday session, so I had a number I could discuss with you. Let's assume the market gets under 1626.60 for the sake of discussion. You'd have lower high, lower low, trend down. However, the bias is up because you're over the 18-day average of closes. Even if you let go of everything, back here you've got major support. I am not even inferring you're going down to that level. I don't see why you would. But I think that when I watch television and I was listening as I was recovering, all I heard is people saying, buy gold. When everybody's telling you to do something, you got a problem with it. If they're all bearish, they're wrong. If they're all bullish, they're wrong too. You can't be that way in the markets. The market's digesting the recent events and it's consolidating price. That's how I'm viewing it. Why? You are correcting right here in the momentum. That is the reason why. Let the market correct a little bit. You still have an overbought reading. This market's got a 72 stochastic at either embeds and it's nowhere near doing that or it consolidates and lets that number come down a little bit. Could it go higher? Sure. Where's the resistance? 1679. You got over this one stretch of the upper Bollinger Bands for five days and bang, you pulled right back down. And as you did that, the odds were in favor that the market needed to do some consolidation. That's what you're doing. This is not a bear market. This is still a bull market in the metals, but too many people on one side, in my opinion. The gold-silver ratio, silver's got a problem. It's an industrial metal. You may want to think of it as a precious metal. It's not. Gold is the precious metal, and if you're arguing dollars for a metal, what's wrong with palladium? That's been one of the super performers. In the silver market, you're not in a trend. You haven't been in a trend. You lost the trend on Tuesday. When the market fell under this low, you had an uptrend, but you're over the Bollinger Band. It's very difficult to stay long over a Bollinger Band. Falls back, finds its first support right where we talk often, what I call the line in the sand, the 18-day average. If that doesn't hold, because now you're not trending, then the 100-day average might be the next support. Market's fighting its battle yesterday. Today it goes to that number. If this doesn't hold, the lower Bollinger Band. Is there a downtrend or an uptrend? No. You got a higher high and a lower low. And folks, I have moved to the May contract in the silver, and I moved to the May contract in the copper. If you stay long the marches, you're up for a delivery notice. If they, It depends who wants to deliver and when. 
you're not in control of that. The seller of the contract delivers. In the copper, you're in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. And the trend was confirmed when you closed under the 18-day average. Now you'd have to get back over this high in order to break the trend of lower highs, lower lows, momentum's down. The resistance, if you rally again, 18-day average, the potential, if you drop, the first challenge of the Bollinger Band. You got down to that number today, and you can see you're trying to hold it. That's all. But something else is brewing here. Look at the sideways action. We have literally been going sideways, if you think about it, since the first of the month after this swoop down. Is the market going to get a worse piece of news and America gets hurt? And what does that do to copper demand? Is China going to come out and say they've contained the virus and the factories are ready to go? And that picks the market back up. I'll let you guess over the weekend. I think that the smart money is not going to take a big chance over the weekend in these markets. In the platinum market, you got a higher high, lower low. The market is oversold, fighting to get back over the uh, 18, I'm sorry, the lower uh, Bollinger Band at this point. You close 9.11.10, that number is 9.23.20, so you got one, two, three days in a row under it. Yeah, five's about it, but if you rally, I'm still going to look for resistance at the 100-day average on the first rally. And in the Palladium, it's time to be out of the March and move into the June. And this is the strongest of all the metals. But it's been that way this whole year and most of last year, too. And you're still up there. Why? Production issues. Why? Eventually, cars will need these products. But it's still at the Bollinger Band. Very, very difficult market. You know, one of the things I try to do for you each day in the mornings is I put out at about 5.30, quarter to 6 in the morning, my video where I'm covering 40 charts at a time in the futures markets. The idea, if you're guessing what you'd want to do, maybe you need a push in your chart confidence, well, uh, you know, you can look and see what I'm saying, and maybe some of my ideas just might sit well with you. They're not all going to be right ideas. I'm going to have wrong ideas. I'm going to have right ideas. Nobody walks on water. But I'm going to cover 40 charts on the markets. And if you've been watching these and you like what I do, I think you'll get a kick out of what I do in the morning. Because I'm going to talk to you a bit on the fundamentals. I wake up early. And by 5.30, quarter six, I've read everything I want at that point out of Asia, out of Europe. I know the reports coming out out of America. You don't want to spend right now a lot of time on the economic data coming out of anywhere. It's all about COVID-19. And each morning we wake up, we're hearing about more cases, whatever it might be. That is the event right now. All the economic data we're getting isn't pointing to what the future is going to hold. COVID-19 is what the future is holding right now. Remember that. So you have to be defensive in your thinking. You have to adjust to an event when it occurs and understand the importance of the events. And I go through that with you in all these markets in this exact sequence. You're able to pull on a scroll bar at the bottom. Let's assume you want to go to the metals. You can scroll right to it. If you want to see what I'm saying in the other parts, you can do it. Each video is about 20 minutes long, so I put a lot of time and effort into them every day. The introductory price, $7.95, lower than a tick in the gold market, the silver market, the stock indices. After that, you have two choices. You, well, three. You can quit. There's no contract with me. You can go to $15 for every uh, 30 days after. You can buy a one-year subscription for $156, which is, and you pay that up front, which is the equivalent of $13, about a tick in those markets. That's the idea here. So if you think this makes sense to you, go to our website, www.irapstein.com, under the word research. We're also temporarily putting in my spider ETF video. The first thing I did today, and if you go on our website and you're already a free trial subscriber or a paid subscriber, under the spider video, you're going to see my daily chart numbers. So now I've given you the window envelope numbers there as well. That'll be part of the spider ETF video uh, subscription. I'm Ira. You have a good day.